Right guys, uh, welcome back to part two of this build. This isn't going to be um, as sort of in-depth as, as the first part was, showing you obviously the build. We've already done the painting stage and it feels like I, I may have jumped ahead quite a bit, but if you bear in mind that the last part we'd already had the red bits done, all I've sprayed is the green and the blue underneath. I have used the stencil as well to paint the markings on the side, so that's all looking pretty good. The colours I've used that are the main ones of um, of interest are these two from MRP. So we've got the A23 green and the A2G light blue, which is for the underside. Um, the green takes quite a few coats to go on, I've got to be honest, but the blue is... Well, that, that went on in sort of one coat. It's very, very strong, so um, that's nice. Uh, nice to have. I went for black internals there as well for the actual landing gear because I saw that in a couple of pictures. Not sure if that's totally right, but I like the idea of it. And then um, we've also got a black propeller on there as well. So that's how all that's come together. Now the mask set that I, I showed at the start of the build video, I used this one from Montex. Now, just as I was about actually at the stage where I finished the last picture, um, at last video, I put that picture up on um, the group that I run for the Spanish Civil War on Facebook and a chap in there pointed out that it's actually not correct. Uh, it, although this looks black in quite a lot of pictures, he showed me some pictures of this one when it got moved to France at the end of the war and you can quite clearly see that it is not black. It is just um, green all the way back and there's some fuel staining coming out of this filler cap here which sort of runs all the way down there which makes it look like it's got this black curve, but that's not actually correct. So that was interesting to have that um, uh, shown. There was an argument that the front cowling was um, was black, but I, I didn't want to mess about with it, so I've just gone for green over top. And this looks very much like the Republican Polycarpov anyway, so there's, there's no problem there. Now we're just going to head on into the weathering stage, and I'm really not going to do too much, I don't think. I'm going to keep this one quite, quite clean, although I said that there was the exhaust staining, uh, the engine uh, fuel staining running down there. I don't really want to go for that. I want to keep this one quite clean. So all I'm really going to be looking to do is to dull down the red a bit, uh, put a bit of colour in some of the panel lines, but not worry too much about it, and then um, bring the build to an end, really. Put some sort of uh, mud, well, not mud, dust effects on the, on the, on the undercarriage. Uh, we do need to put... a uh, piece of thread running through there because it had a wire that used to pull the undercarriage in so just attach that and pick out a few other details um, this one did go to Telford uh, because I got it to the mat coat stage and was going to just weather it then on camera and I have lost the pitot tube but I really don't think that's too much of a problem I've got the paints here so I'll just put a piece of Albion alloys in there and um, also for the wing guns as well and uh, that will bring us up to scratch so uh, let's get into the weathering stage Okay, so I've cracked out the oils and um, I'm just using general uh, artist oils here and cutting it all with a low odor thinner which is from um, De La Rowney, usual art shop stuff. And I have gone over the model now with the first pass which is burnt um, uh, raw umber. So I'm just using, Win Win um, I'm just using Windsor & Newton, uh, their Winton range of oil colour and this is the raw umber. Put it on a bit of kitchen towel just to take out some of the linseed oil which helps for the drying. Um, I've mixed it in here with some of the thinners and just run around certain places. I've given it a bit of a filter on the red just to bring it down and a filter just means a very thin, uh, bit almost like the liquid with a touch of colour in there and that just pulls that colour right the way across and it shifts the tone of the red so just takes it down a notch because it was a little bit bright. So I've done that all over. Uh, run around some of the panels, uh, panel lines on the underside and on the top and now it's just a case of, of using some neat thinners now and just trying to knock it all back into the actual places where I want it to be. And it's all still very active, this has been drying for about an hour and a half and then with a brush and cotton bud um, it's easy just to take the excess off and knock it back like so where there's a little bit of staining there that's put that back in and we've got a bit of a heavy bit there 
So just break that up with the neat thinners and go in with something. You could use like kitchen towel or anything. Um, doesn't need to be a cotton bud. Cotton buds can leave a bit of uh, fluff around which can be a bit of a problem. And that there has just blended that all in. And we've got the same going up the side of these panel lines, so just getting a bit... What I like about a cotton bud is you can be a bit more um, abrasive than you can with a brush or anything like that. So I just moisten the area and then it, it holds well enough in the panel for it not to be a problem. So just going over something like that just to loosen it and then actually uh, a good blending brush like this, one of the wide thick brushes is quite good for the last bit so where it's all sort of dry you can you can really well blend it which is what we're doing and that's what works best with this sort of weathering blending it all together not having any heavy spots making it all sort of work as one and I don't really want to go any heavier I won't be using another color actually after this this is going to be um, plenty good enough so once this is all cleaned up um, I'll probably just then go into pigments and call it a day to be honest because this is just giving me the definition that I wanted and I quite like the green where I've done some um, well it's not actually pre-shading it's just where because it, it's the MRP where you've built it up in layers I've, I've got sort of spots where it's been quite a lot of paint and spots where it's a bit thinner and it's shown, showing some of the base coat through so it just gives a nice effect like that which is plenty good enough for the, the model I want to really sort of represent at the end how I want it to look is what I mean there. Um, and bizarrely, there's not quite, there's not that much exhaust staining on these. I've noticed by looking at reference pictures. So that's another thing to bear in mind. I always like to be guided by the reference photos as opposed to what I want or think. Um, and I'm quite happy to change my mind if I want to go for something quite heavy and then I've found I've depicted an aircraft that when I look at some of the pictures it's actually very clean or it's quite different to what I expect then now I usually just change to that um, of course you can do whatever you like really that's the whole point of the hobby isn't it so that's all working there quite well now uh, and hopefully you can see there on camera how that's really just sort of refined what we had there before. It's um, taken some of the messiness away, given a bit of the depth and added a few more different tones all over the flat areas and the large sort of green bits and it should um, help with that as I was saying with this sort of pre-shading the kind of broken colour that we've got this will help give sort of depth as well. So I'll go ahead and do that over the rest of the model and then we'll see where we are from there. Okay, now that's been done, um, I've just put some extra thinners just around the fuselage there just to give a little bit of staining as it dries off. So we'll see what that effect looks like. I'll leave this overnight now to dry back. Um, there's still a few little areas I've just noticed, so around there I've gone a bit heavy. So just knock that back, but now that we're um, sorted, this is a sort of dry over overnight kind of uh, scenario now really, which is best to sort of see what, um, as it dries, which it will dry sort of matte. This is all over a matte coat. There's no need for it to be glossy or anything. Um, it does mean it bites a little bit more, but with the thinners it, it soon picks it up and moves it. So once that's dried up in the morning, we can see what we're like. If there's any more sort of stains we don't like the look of, we can knock them out again with some more neat thinners, and then it'll be on to the next stage. Right, so here we are the next day, and everything seems to have gone pretty good. We've got a little bit of streaking um, happening around here, so I'm just gonna try and knock that back a little bit, just with some of these uh, cotton buds and that sort of thing. But I think generally uh, everything's looking all right. Yeah, not too bad there. It seems to have had the desired effect. As I say, it's all very subtle with this one. Don't want to do too much at all uh, in the way of heavy weathering. I've got one already that I've done quite heavy. So for my own personal collection and um, yeah, going around to the shows and stuff, I just want, I just want one that's, you know, 
portraying the polycarp off in all its glory I suppose. Don't want to detract from it with, with weathering and that sort of thing. Now for the pigments I like to use these MIG pigments uh, which is airfield dust. I actually find these uh, these pretty good to be honest. I was using the old version of the MIG pigments so European dust and that sort of thing but this is absolutely perfect for undercarriage wheels as you would expect I suppose being airfield dust. Now what I do is just plough it on right over a matte coat like this quite heavily in all the kind of areas up and uh, around the landing gear especially for stuff like um, these Spanish aircraft which were often operating in desert so I like to get right in and around and also into the actual wheel well and um, where all the landing gear is going to go so where I would think dust would naturally collect and don't worry it's not going to stay on quite as heavy as it looks at the minute I'm just making sure it's all in the channels and everywhere I want it to be very easy to miss that sorry about the angle I'm trying to make it so most of this goes back in the pot but you know you can't you can't have it all I suppose right that's one side let's do the other side now this may look like uh, it's a bit over the top but I'll show you shortly that there's a couple of techniques you can do to kind of tame it a little bit and bring it back to something a little bit more sensible it is also worth mentioning that quite a lot of this pigment is getting into the air now I'm not wearing a mask but usually when I'm doing a lot of this I do put a, a respirator mask on which has a good particulate filter um, attached to it which is what I've got so I would obviously advise using that if you're going to use things that are dusty pigments or that sort of thing good to look after yourself don't want to get ill just for uh, uh, modeling that would be a bit silly wouldn't it right so let's just give that all a tap now the best way I've found to get around what we've got here now is to load up the airbrush make sure it's actually switched on then at a good high pressure just give it a hit like that and that gets rid of the initial loose pigment and then with a knocked off paintbrush we can just go in and just kind of make it all get it all to you know line up where it actually makes sense and not so heavy and just kind of bring it back into something that's a little bit more sensible and natural and looks the part instead of just chucked all over the place and also use the um, cotton bud as well again which gives it a bit more bite I, I don't like how it's sort of sitting up on the on the wheel there and at the back here of course on the tire the flats of the tire where it actually touches the ground you're not going to have uh, too much dust I wouldn't have thought but we might do on the inside of the tire and hub just where it gets a chance to collect and I'll go back over again with the airbrush just go in a bit tighter there we go I will um, continue just to tidy all that up and then we'll get into the final reveal so here we are C um, construction is complete the models finished and um, that brings the weathering to an end. So I've just taken some detailed pictures of this one, so they'll be with you uh, shortly. Now, this has been a bit of a different build. I didn't do any talking in the uh, in the first part, <laughs> and probably too much talking in the second part, but I'm trying to mix it up, try different things. So uh, do let me know in the comments below what you think of the videos and um, any uh, criticism, constructive or otherwise, or tips, or, or you know hints on how to uh, maybe go forward with the channel I'm all ears so uh, do let me know because at the end of the day this is all for you for your viewing pleasure so uh, nice build great kit fantastic I, I can't speak highly enough of it to be honest it is a, it's a wonderful kit it goes together very well I think I rushed the fuselage to wing join and made it a little bit more difficult than it should be as well as around the cowling so as long as you take your time it's absolutely no problem it's a wonderful kit 
of a fantastic subject and they do uh, the only ones they don't do that I can see is the two-seater and the type 56 so maybe we'll see them down the line who knows they've had to give us um, a whole fuse large half and new wing for this kit there's not much left to do a type 5 or 6 and a new fuselage for the for the two seater you'd be away so it would be amazing to have those in 132nd scale so we'll have to wait and see if ICM decide to bring those out so as usual thanks for um, viewing and uh, I hope this build series has been uh, of interest to you and that you enjoy the pictures that are coming so as always thanks for watching stay tuned to the channel because there's plenty more to come and I'll see you in the next video